Well, good day, my friends. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion, and today we are in Winterset, Iowa. And today we are going to do a filming location vlog for a surprisingly wonderful movie. I say surprisingly because it's not surprising considering that it's starring Meryl Streep and Clint Eastwood and it's directed by Clint Eastwood, but for many decades I completely ignored ever watching this movie. I was on an airplane, saw that it was one of the options and just gave it a try and I was really, really amazed at what a wonderful story it is. It's somewhat morally... It's one of those movies that it puts you in a moral quandary but the story kind of, well, I'll tell you the story as we're out vlogging it. So today we're going to do a vlog on the bridges of Madison County. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. Our first stop is going to be out at Francesca's house. Oh wow, take a look at this. Should have brought my sled. Well, here's the house. Even though there's a no trespassing sign out front, someone actually was coming in and let me in just to get some footage of this, so. This is where Clint pulls up for the first time at Francesca's house. Francesca's family has, her son, daughter, and husband have taken off to go show a prize steer at the Illinois Fair, and Robert Kincaid is lost, so he comes up here to the house to ask for help finding the Rosemont Bridge from this nice farm lady that lives here and this is where he and Francesca first meet. She attempts to give him directions and um, you know she's giving him directions saying go to turn at this family's farm and turn at this family's farm and he's completely clueless so she says well I can tell you or I can show you and so she ends up hopping in the truck with him and going off to show him where the Rosemont Bridge is and that's where they really get to know each other. They're complete opposites in many ways. Mainly, you know, she, she was born in Italy, in Bari, Italy, and met a soldier, moves to the United States and has a family and then lives on this farm. And Clint is a traveling photographer for National Geographic. He goes all over the world taking photos and living these amazing stories and details of life that you seemingly can only catch in those magazines but he's actually living them out and so his life really fascinates her the more she hears about his life the more she's fascinated by him and even though she's married they start a friendship where she invites him to come have dinner here and so they have dinner and they're talking about life and various times you see them really connecting and then at times clashing on their life beliefs because as he tells about what he likes to do in life and how he lives his life, sometimes she takes that as though he's putting down her style of life or that her life isn't as good, which generally is never the case. That's not what he's ever intending to do. But he ends up falling for her and she falls for him and they have a four day affair. And this is Basically a couple of times when he first comes to town after they've been out to the Rosemont Bridge and he has dinner He mentions that he hasn't even checked into his hotel yet and um, and then invites her the next day to meet him um, Later on in the evening at the Hollowell Bridge and then he realizes that there's a woman in town um, That he sees at the cafe who had slept with a married man and she's now basically shunned in this town and so he calls her and says if you don't want to meet me I understand but they have a lot of their great moments in here and like I said it's a very morally curious movie because they fall in love innocently and unfortunately she's already married you know some of the greatest moments in the movie happen here not only do they bond here and like I said it really is it does start out innocently um, but then this is where they have their big clash where she says, you know, I know I'm just another one of your stories and that, you know, someday you'll be sitting in some other housewife's kitchen telling stories about me and he gets really offended and upset and he says, you know, I'm not going to let you judge my life and I can't need you. I can't need you because I can't have you. You belong to someone else and, and if I can't have you and if I can't have you as part of my life, then I can't, you know, I can't, I can't do this. And then they start questioning what would life be like if they were together and she basically says, you know, I would be throwing away a life 
to have a whole new life. I wouldn't be able to merge them. They would, what I have with Richard, I wouldn't have with you. And what I have with you, Robert, I wouldn't, you know, I don't get with Richard, but my kids are a big part of my life and your life is details. And I just don't want to give up those details. And he, Clint Eastwood says to her, you know, moments like these come but once a lifetime and he really means it and he really wants this to work but he can tell that Francesca is just not going to change her mind. Now the reason they have no trespassing signs because when this movie was made this house was just a, like a shell. The production actually built everything inside and created the house itself to be movie friendly. And then after the production left, they had it open to tours. Um, but unfortunately, someone, there was an arson. And so in 2003, they quit doing tours and quit letting people come out here. Like I said, I got lucky. Guy who lives on the property was just pulling in and said I could take a few photos and everything. But right over here where you see this windmill, that's where the uh, trough is where the first night that Clint stays, he is out here washing up and washing his face in that. You can definitely see how bad a shape the house is in now. I'm not even going to go into it or touch it or anything. I promised him I wouldn't, and I promised I wouldn't stay very long. And when I see this door, I just always think of that last scene here when Clint is walking out and he goes out to his truck and he comes driving out of here and she's having her second thoughts and she comes running out here after him as the car is driving away. And this is also, this house is where the whole movie kind of starts because the basis of this movie is that Francesca has passed away and now her kids are about to find out her secret. And as you can imagine, her kids are very confused because they get the safe deposit box and they start reading. Their mother writes three notebooks telling the story of her and Robert and then they find Robert's letters to her and the kids, you know, who love their father and know that their father and mother were supposed to be buried together, she now is putting in her will that she wants to be cremated. And basically, at the end of the movie, she says that, I gave my life to your father, but I want to give my death to Robert. Now, much like Clint, let's hop in my pickup that I rented and head out of here. Go on to our next stop leaving Francesca's farm. One of the moments that really wins over Francesca is when she mentions she's from Bari, Italy, and Clint says, oh yeah, I've been there. And she says, you've been there? He says, yeah, I was on a train one time, looked out the window, saw it, it looked beautiful, so I stayed there for a few days. And to her, she just couldn't imagine someone having the freedom to just get off a train and just adventure and stay there for a few days. His whole life was magical to her. And to him, he didn't believe that the American dream was a family. He just, he didn't buy into that, he said. He didn't think that everybody had to have that to be happy. Well, we've made it to our Rosemont Bridge stop. Francesca and Robert would have been coming in Robert's truck down this road in front of us and they would have pulled up and you can see where the barriers are right there. They don't let any cars drive over the bridges anymore. That's about roughly right over here is where Robert's truck is parked. He hops out and tells her that he just wants to get some preliminary shots. He's not going to do any real shooting today because the lighting isn't good but he wants to kind of scope it out a little bit so he grabs his Nikon camera out of the trunk or out of the back of the pickup truck and then immediately starts walking down here and starts setting up his tripod down in this area down here. So Robert's down here getting an eye for how he's gonna shoot his footage the next day and he's looking at the bridge and Francesca starts wandering along the entrance to the bridge and starts walking through the bridge. So as Robert's down there, Francesca is up here doing what we're doing. Kind of going into the bridge, looking around the inside. At the time, this would have looked a little different. Same colors, same railing and everything, but it looks like they've kind of made it a little sturdier on the outside. 
and in the movie there's actually a little lamp hanging from up there and it doesn't say Roseman Bridge so she comes in here and you see her kind of looking around at the bridge and you hear him snapping photos and as she's walking through here he yells up to her pretty hot out here isn't it she says something back yes and he says if you want some sodas I have them out in my truck so she turns around and walks back out to the truck and gets in his cooler and grabs herself a soda and pops the top off of it then comes walking back up this way now as Robert's out there taking photos right below here Francesca wanders up here and is standing here with her back to this and she's kind of glancing over to see what he's doing and you actually see this R in the shot in the movie when she's looking around it and as she's walking along this you actually see her run her fingers across this GRH in the movie as she comes along here so when she gets her soda she's looking around and can't find him and then notices down here at the end his tripod is standing kind of silhouetted right here at the exit of the bridge and so she comes walking out of the bridge out this way and she looks over the railing and sees Robert Kincaid right down here picking flowers and he comes walking up he comes right around the edge of that rail says I was just picking you some flowers men still do that don't they as a sign of appreciation and she puts her head down and says yeah they do but those are poisonous and he drops the flowers <laughs> and then she said I'm kidding I'm kidding I'm sorry then as he leans down to pick up the flowers he looks up at her and says are you always sadistic by nature or what and she starts laughing and says I don't know why I did that why I said that So his tripod would have actually been right over in here. Our next stop here in town is the North Side Cafe. The front has changed a little bit, but here you can see this is where Clint's enjoying his coffee up at the counter when the Redfield woman comes in. So this is where the Redfield woman walks in and Clint is actually sitting over here, right there. He's sitting in the third seat and he tells her there's room at the end, so she comes and sits down at the very last seat. And while she's sitting there, the waitress comes up and says, what do you want? And she feels uncomfortable, so she gets up and leaves and Clint watches her walk out. Check this out, right here on the napkin holder is that scene in this exact spot. Look inside here, they have one of the Nikons from the movie. It's really cool to see inside here, it hasn't changed. And when Clint walks out of the diner, kind of thinking about what he saw in there, he's walking over here towards his truck, and he notices the Redfield woman who had slept with a married man. Um, that's basically what everybody is shunning her for. We find out at the very end of the movie that she becomes Francesca's closest friend and that the man that the Redfield woman had had the affair with eventually divorces his wife and they end up getting married. So for this trip I tried to have the Robert Kincaid experience so I rented a pickup truck for driving through Iowa. That is the bridge we are looking for, so we are very close. So here we have the Hollowell Bridge, and it's been completely redone since the movie. If you remember in the movie, it's kind of a light blue, kind of whitish blue, and it's much more rickety looking than this. <laughs> but this is where we see, this is that moment where Clint has, or well, Robert has invited Francesca to come out here while he's taking photos, and he has called her and said, 
you know, I didn't realize, you know, what this might look like. So if you don't want to meet me, I totally understand. And she says, no, I do want to meet you. So she comes driving through this bridge and parks her car, well, her truck right here. His truck is already parked right here going the opposite way. And Robert is out here taking photos. So he ends up walking down through there and somehow crosses the water. <laughs> I mean, they don't show him doing it, but you hear his photo, his uh, camera taking photos as she's walking through this. So we get Meryl Streep is walking through and just kind of looking around, taking in everything. And as she's doing this, you can hear all the snap, 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 snap from Clint Eastwood. So as Francesca's walking through the bridge, when she gets to the end of the bridge, she doesn't hear any more photos being snapped, so she takes a look over the side. And as you can see, people leave messages all over the side of the bridge. Even a heart up there. So she comes out of here and then looks over the side and then he surprises her by popping out right here with his camera pointed at her and he starts taking photos of her. And he says, come on, give me one of those French model looks. And she gets all bashful. So Clint would be standing here snapping all those photos. I was wondering if anyone would put Francesca and Robert or anything like that, but I do see this. Identity theft is not a joke, Jim. Millions of people suffer every year. Dwight K. Schrute. <laughs> from the office. All right, let's head off to our next spot. So right here, as we walk along, you can see this is the Pheasant Run Pub and Grill in Bridges of Madison County. That's where Francesca and Robert go out to that blues club when she says that Robert knows people all over the world and one of them tells him to go to this place in Dubuque and that nobody will spot them there or anything. So that's where they're in there having that drink and listening to blues. Here they have some history of the bridges being built, the covered bridges. So now we're gonna go over to what I consider to be one of the saddest moments of the whole movie. This is the scene where it's raining outside, Francesca's husband is back, and um, her and her husband Richard go into town to get a few supplies. Francesca goes inside of the um, Winter Set General store. Well, let's go take a look where it was. So even though it's changed quite a bit, the old General store was right here and right where this car is parked is where Francesca and her husband park their truck and it's raining outside and Francesca goes in and gets a few supplies and comes running out, hops in the truck and then while she's sitting in the truck, she looks across the driver's side and notices that Robert's truck is parked right there. Somehow Robert Kincaid happens to be right there in the middle of this pouring rain. He gets out of his truck and starts walking as though he's going to come towards her and he just looks at her and they look at each other for a moment and then you see he gets kind of a look on his face that he knows it's over and he turns around and gets back in his truck. All right, then Francesca's husband comes walking out of the feed store that was right next door to the general store and he gets in the truck and they start coming out and you can see Francesca starting to think about it. She's looking over, she's thinking about her time with Robert and as her husband turns the truck around right here and starts passing, Robert pulls his truck out in front of them and they come up to this intersection right here. As they sit at this intersection in the rain, the light changes and Francesca's thinking, what should she do? Should she jump out of the truck and run up and get in Robert's truck? The light turns green and Robert doesn't go. He's waiting there for a while and eventually Francesca's husband gets tired of waiting and honks the horn. 
And Francesca thinks even harder and she reaches over to grab her door as though she's gonna open the door and jump out and run into Robert's car. But her husband honks the horn again. Robert slowly pulls out into the intersection, makes the left at this intersection right here. And that Frosties was still there at the time. He turns right there and he leaves her life forever as her and her husband go straight. Real metaphor for the life. And you see her start looking out the window crying because she knows that even though she made the right decision, it probably wasn't the decision that her heart wanted. And eventually, Robert ends up passing away and leaving all of his possessions to Francesca. This is the last moment that they have her car here, his truck right there. Now we're not done yet. I wanna go back out to the Rosemond Bridge where we've already been and I wanna finish off this vlog out there the way they finish off the movie. So now we're back out here at the Rosemond Bridge and the heartwarming ending of this movie takes place right here. The kids of Francesca now understand the story and they decide to honor her wishes by having her cremated and scattering her ashes here off the bridge to be with Robert for eternity. So it's actually right here that her son and daughter come over here and they lean over and they dump the ashes and you see the ashes blowing in the wind and you can actually see the house and the little silo building over here in the shot. And so at the very end, you just see those ashes all billowing off to join Robert Kincaid. Well, my friends, we're gonna call it a day here. I hope you enjoyed this vlog and I hope if you haven't seen this movie in a long time or you've never seen it, I hope you'll give it a try. It's a very unique story and very, I don't know, it, it just makes you think, definitely makes you think. Have a great night everyone, we'll see you all next time. Goodbye.